Good morning. Happy Pride. It's a beautiful day to celebrate queerness and love and the spectrum of gender. I'm reporting to you from the perspective of Dallas, Texas. Before we hop into that, I went home last weekend and filmed a little bit but didn't want to vlog the whole time so I put together like a little something. Let's backtrack to last weekend and then fast forward to now. wanted to pop in and say hi. If you've seen my vlogs from being back home at all before, you know that it is much less a vlog and much more a travel diary. So with that being said, here is a little piece of my heart from me to you. Let's get into it. You know, my niece was born in December. I saw her for the first time in February and went back home just this last weekend of May and she is triple the size she was. So by the next time I see her later this year, I fully expect her to be a teenager and that is crazy. Children are crazy <laughs> in so many ways, but being at Thea has been such a gratifying experience for me already and she hasn't even had her first birthday yet. So I'm really looking forward to that being another layer added to my identity, being her cool Thea who talks to her about all the things nobody else does. Anyways, given the nature of this vlog and the atmosphere that I'm wanting to create here on this channel at all times, but also just throughout this weekend, that is such a beautiful time. I feel like it's necessary to address a couple things. I can't have a vlog that celebrates celebrates all things beautiful without having a conversation about what resources you can tap into to learn, to understand. So right here I'm going to include a few of my favorite podcasts that have just historically been really impactful to my learning and to my feelings. If you only have time to listen to one, I would maybe listen to this one right here by You're Wrong About. It's a classic, just goes over what actually happened the night of the Stonewall riots. There's a lot of little tidbits of information in there that are just good to know. And the way that they explain is very immersive and is enough to bring you to tears. So I would definitely give that one a good listen. As far as a couple lighter ones, you know I have to put in some episodes from the Binge Topia girlies. They just articulate everything so well and in such a funny, digestible way that makes you feel like you're at a sleepover with two of the coolest girls you've ever known. So I'll put those here. There's a couple different ones that I can think of off the top of my head, but my favorite one for this month specifically is the episode that they did on the concept of gender and the spectrum of gender and what it actually is. I think something I hear very frequently is people saying that they want to talk about things but they are so afraid to be incorrect or to offend anybody and while I think that that's a very valid concern, one that I have felt myself many many times, that leads me into another recommendation. There's a book I'm currently reading called Pleasure Activism by Adrienne Marie Brown who is a very big leader in the charge for the Black Lives Matter movement. She's just this amazing spiritual healer person who is just a gift to the world and articulates thoughts in a really comforting and non-intimidating way. 
you know? I also just feel like it's nice sometimes when you read books from the perspective of somebody who is not flashing their elitist institution degree in your face every five seconds because you don't need a degree to be qualified to talk about things that you have experienced or that you care about, especially in a country with so many hurdles that work against access, access to, education, to education, access to healthcare, healthcare access, access to mental stability. <laughs> These are conversations <laughs> for another day. The point that I was bringing up and the reason why this book is relevant is because there's a line in there where she specifically states, that, let me just grab the book, let me, let me just grab the book. Language changes so quickly these days. The right way to speak about people, about identities, about gender, about geography, everything is in motion on a regular basis. I know that in writing this book, I am creating something instantly dated. Given that God is changed, there are some terms in this book that I want to be super clear about. And then she goes about to explain certain terms like the connotation she has behind bitch and words like that. And then at the end of it, there's another line that I highlighted because it stuck out to me. If this is being read in a future in which this language has evolved, then please know I would be evolving right along with you. Which I think is a beautiful sentiment. I think it's a really good way to show up as human and also acknowledge that other people's feelings are valid and the changes that are constantly occurring are valid. We're constantly being exposed to new information and changing our opinions and becoming more informed and thinking, oh my God, I can't believe I thought I knew everything three months ago. And three months from now, I'm gonna be baffled that I thought I knew everything then. <laughs> so it's a really refreshing, really refreshing thing to hear. So long as you are open to new information and have your arms wide open to all different sorts of people, you are doing something right. <laughs> and uh, all you can do is all you can do. However, don't be confused. You know, my sister always likes to say that intention does not equal impact. Somebody can still be hurt even if that wasn't your intention. So of course, of course, always be mindful of the things that you're saying and the way that you're saying them, but don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid to speak about the things that you care about because it could change somebody's life. So with all of that mushy gushy stuff being said, Let's celebrate some fucking pride. Let's celebrate some pride. I'm gonna bring you guys along with me. Here is the game plan. We are about to kick off the weekend by going to Fair Park. They are having their big day one pride festival with all the vendors and the shows and the fun stuff. They're also having a pet zone that I think is sponsored by like an adoption agency. So they're gonna have pets there that can be taken home and uh, cared for, which is really, really cool. After the festival, later on tonight, we're gonna go to Roy G's, which is one of our favorite places in Dallas. Most for the vibes. It's located in the Gaberhood, which is Cedar Springs area of Dallas, Texas, and it's literally called the Gaberhood because it's full of LGBTQIA friendly HIV testing and thrift stores and restaurants and bars and the sidewalks are covered in rainbows. I think I've shown that area in my vlogs before. It's a really fun little nook of the city that feels super safe and comforting and warm and so we like to spend as much time there as possible and the food is good and the drinks are good and the waiters take shots with you and the playlist is fun. Fire. they've got the neon signs it's it's a good time it's a good time i'll take you with us after or before roy g's i really want to make our way over to a drag show i know that there's so many throughout the city tonight there's a really fun place called the trove i'll insert the information here in bishop arts district which we stumbled upon one random day and coincidentally arrived just as the drag show was starting and it was the most picturesque coming of age film laughing to my belly having the the best time moment that I've experienced since moving to this city, honestly. And since then, I've been craving another one. Tomorrow morning, we wanna make our way over to Snooze and AM Eatery, which I've showed on this channel before also because it's one of our favorite brunch spots just like everyone else and tomorrow they're actually partnering with the trevor project and donating proceeds from the meals which is really really cool i'll insert information on here as well and then after that we're heading over to fair park again to go to the parade and do it up have a fun little time i'll probably cry fully prepared for that uh so i think it's gonna be a fun weekend i'm open to things changing i'm open to whatever comes along i have some friends that i'm hoping to run into at pride today and and on that note, things are about to get a little bit heavier for a second because I was actually talking to that friend yesterday when I was debating if I was actually gonna go to Pride after all. So I've been super excited about this for weeks. I mean, we went to so many different stores looking for the right flags and t-shirts and finding our pets little t-shirts and looking into places that we can donate. You know, it's been a really exciting time and something that I've been really looking forward to. I took a whole day off work to have a full weekend to wild out, but it is undeniable that there is and has been a dire gun control issue in this country for such a long time. It's something that takes a very heavy toll on me. 
especially as somebody who can't just talk human rights issues in their spare time it's a very very big core value for me that determines a lot of the decisions that I make and the people I surround myself with so it, it it's all consuming it really is and I've had some fear throughout the past few weeks you know it's been in the back of my mind and then when the shooting happened in Texas very recently I felt a shift and could no longer really console myself about it when it's the morning of pride and there's been shootings in your state within a few hours of where you live it makes you rethink uh the space that was supposed to be intended for love and joy and instead makes you fearful to show up so i really toggled back and forth between the risk factors and it being worth it um Ultimately, I'm going, I'm here, because the community deserves a place to celebrate love and wholeness and discovery and so many people that will be there today and so many people who won't be there today have worked so hard to come to terms with who they are and to be comfortable being who they are. They've navigated issues with family members and friends and teachers and bullies and, and, and people who just could not see them for who they were created as. And all of this space that we are taking today and this month and every day of the year is rightfully ours and nobody is allowed to take that from us. Nobody is allowed to deprive us of our opportunity to celebrate our livelihood. So I'm going and I'm gonna have a grand little time and I'm gonna be safe and I'm gonna practice knowing what's in my control and what's not and I'm gonna tell you about where you can access some resources to learn more about how to combat this issue. I'll put some information here or below in the description box to some organizations that you can donate to or some books that you can read, some articles you might wanna look into. It takes five seconds. <laughs> it, it takes five seconds to shift a perspective. So yeah, that's all I have for you at the moment. Um, let's take it back a couple notches. Let's fucking party. Happy Pride. I kept it relatively simple with the makeup. I didn't want to do the cliche rainbow ombre eyeshadow. Not because it's not cute. It looks very cute on a lot of people. But it's going to be hot as hell outside and I'm going to be sweating. And I frankly didn't have the time today. So this is what we're working with. I don't know if it'll pick up on camera, but there are a lot of sparkles on my face. And I decided to move forward with a Canadian tuxedo today because my younger self absolutely loved this outfit. But then I saw a tweet, I think, when I was like 14 talking about how tacky it was to wear denim on denim and just decided that that was decided for me. But I woke up today and was like, no, this is a day for listening to my inner child. So this is what we're leaving the house in. At first glance, this doesn't look very festive, but this denim jacket is actually very cute. I'll insert a clip here. It is a jacket that commemorates the Stonewall riots, which is super cool and vintage E, but I got it at Target. So I'll link this below. I also put some pigtails in my hair, also to honor that inner child. And I plan on having as much fun as a child would have. Speaking of children, my child <laughs> Roxy, show them you should! Speaking of children, my child is decked out of the merch. You know what to expect around here. He would not keep his t-shirt on, so she's the only one. He's a little homophobic, if you ask me. That's just really rude, but she's on the right team. He, on the other hand, I don't claim him. <laughs> Actually, you're really cute. Now say hi. Hi! And here she comes. Blocking the view, getting the attention. What do you know about what actually happened on June 27th, still left really early because it was so hot it was hot it was disgusting we were like drenched it was really gross anyways we're about to head out to roy g's the bar that i was mentioning earlier but first tequila shop <laughs> we don't have limes so you have to improvise weak the salt and the lemon yeah. you know that i'm going to go through the three let's chew let's chew 
get the job done. You're kidding. Oh my god, I wish you could smell this right now. This man is fiending for this food. <laughs> what, Edgar? He's like, maybe if I rub on her, she will sacrifice the breakfast. Not quite. Not quite. much later pride was so much fun so perfect so emotional and i'm so glad that we went and i do not let my fear hold me back i was emotional as soon as we got there <laughs> like as soon as we drove by and i saw everything that was going on my eyes started welling up and then when i saw the mexican flag i almost lost it but it was beautiful and amazing and again i'm just i'm so glad that we went last night was really fun too it was so hot though as i'm sure you can tell i'm like sunburned from being out in the sun all day but honestly it really hits it really hits to like be out in the sun and then come back get in the shower sit in your clean clothes and just like have that little sun-kissed feeling i don't know i can't explain it it's one of my favorite things after pride we went to the pool because it was like 97 degrees outside and that was insane uh, <laughs> and we just had some fun it's just been like a classic good little summer day we're gonna pack it in for the night um, actually i have to take care of some stuff i need to fill out some forms because i think i'm gonna talk about this in another video but i am seeing my first in-person therapist starting tuesday so i have to fill out some forms for that and finish up new client forms and like the history of my trauma and stuff so that's really heavy and i've been avoiding it but look we have to take care of that today because i work tomorrow i'm currently reading this book by jen sincero it's called how to be a badass and making money she has the original book i think it was the original book you are a badass it was like the first self-help book that i ever read when i was like 16 and i've been meaning to read this for a really long time but i'm currently in a phase of taking my long-term personal finances very seriously which is a very adult thing to do very vast and scary but exciting thing and i'm excited to learn so i thought this was a good place to start it was actually really sweet i mentioned just in passing to daniel the other day that this was a book that i wanted to read and i left the apartment to go upstairs to one of our business centers and facetime one of my friends who's gonna leave to europe for a few weeks and and when I got home, like an hour later, this is what I saw, I'll insert a picture. He had went and picked this book up as well as like this specific pizza bread bowl that I mentioned I wanted to try. Our favorite sweets, our favorite wine, it was very, very cute. Roxy is here, as you can see. She was appalled that we left her this morning. She truly could not believe that we could be such traitors. And she's very stressed out right now because she can't see where her dad is, but um, love her. Roxy, you wanna say hi? She's not interested. Not the baby hair is being out. <laughs> this is the, this is the thing that all of my family will remember about me when I have passed. That this has been an ever-present theme in my life. I can never seem to get these under control. <laughs> Hello. Happy Friday. Happy weekend. It is I in the flesh. Hello. 
<laughs> it's Friday night. I just finished getting ready. I have a friend who will be here in a few minutes. See what we get up to. We're going to this really fun place that I've had my eye on for a while now. It's in the arts district. It's called Revellers Hall. It's like one of those places where you walk by and you just know everybody inside is having a good time. The music just like pours out. And we'll be right down the street from this really fun club that does drag. So I'm just really excited. It's gonna be a really good time. Couple drinks deep. Makeup looks cute. I'm going a little casual with the sundress and the headband and the denim jacket. <laughs> Don't know how much I'll vlog. Don't know if I'll get her on the vlog because she's my closest friend in Dallas, but I've never had her in the videos. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what we get up to. We're taking shots. Our Uber's gonna be here in like a couple minutes. And we don't have lime, so we're using oranges because hot girls innovate. <laughs> you wanna introduce yourself? Me? Because <laughs> this is the worst moment. Hey, the way I'm so Tell us about you. No. Queen. <laughs> 26 year old, lesbian. Period. Fun fact, we're literally from the same <laughs> county. <laughs> yeah, you did good, you did good. <laughs>